I just turned like those three grand worth of daggers into 55,000. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a character who can make millions of gold selling blacksmith items with just two focus points and no skills invested at all in that train so that you can put all of your focus points into the social and intellect skills which will allow you to raise a large army. This is awesome because you get all the benefits of blacksmithing with basically just two points of investment which you get from the base skills when you start the game. So I go with the Batanians because they get a 50% less speed penalty when they're in force. This is important for when you're chasing down enemies or trying to run away. The plus one militia production is just icing on the cake and the 10% slower build rate is not that big of a deal. Now for this build, I go with my patented mace face look, the beautiful smile. I'm gonna go with family, healers, early childhood, your aptitude for numbers, adolescence repaired projects, youth stood guard with the garrisons, young adulthood, you invested money into some land, and your story background is you organize the travelers to break out. Now all of this is going to give you two focus points in smithing, which is all we're going to put into smithing. And we're going to be able to create javelins and take a perk that allows us to make six to seven thousand per fine steel ingot. We'll be able to make millions of gold relatively quickly with maybe like one or two hours of work. We're going to be putting all of our skills on this build to get social and intelligence to 10 and to max out the focus points of all of these skills. Charm, leadership, trade, all of these skills will make you an excellent commander and kingdom maker. With intellect, we'll get steward, medicine, and engineering. This will make you an effective conqueror. You'll be able to have the highest amount of men in your army. You'll lose less men with high medicine skills and you'll be able to quickly construct siege engines. For cunning and scouting, we're just going to use NPCs that have max scouting already. For endurance, we'll probably put one or two points into right, one or two focus points into writing and one or two focus points into athletics. For control, we're going to go with five into bow. If you're not good with the bow, go ahead with crossbow. And for vigor and for combat, I'm going to go two-handed. If you want to use a sword and shield, just pick one combat that you're going to max out, but we will not be putting any points into vigor, control, endurance, or cunning. All social and intellect. What's great about this though is we're going to have just enough smithing to make a ton of money from smithing. Now we need a really serious name for this guy, so I'm going with Ben. Now I also want a really nice name. I'm really into strategy and importance. So one of the most important strategic locations in England is a town called Dover, which is the most narrow part of the English Canal. So our last name is going to be Dover. Now also I want people to know that I'm super friendly, so that when they see me they don't run away. I'm going with this big high five. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is head to Zestia and we're going to be buying pigs to turn into gold. Now I can see that there are six looters there. So we're going to want three recruits to help escort our massive amount of hogs home. Now it doesn't seem that we have enough money and we really really need these hogs. So I'm going to sell my civilian gear to this town in order to buy all of these hogs. Now that I stripped down I can buy 40 hogs and move them south. Okay, so these bandits want to die. This is why having the bow as one of your early weapons is extremely important. Just circle your enemies and gradually shoot them. But do be careful because rocks do hurt and they have a very high quantity of rocks. All right, and then once you have killed your enemies, you can take the prisoners and their loot and continue your journey south. I would recommend at this point that you make sure to put one focus point into steward so that you're leveling up your steward as you are traveling with the few men that you purchased. When you get to Poros, slaughter all the hogs and sell everything that you just gained. As you can see from the original thousand gold I had, I have now 2,300 gold. I am then gonna go and buy all the hogs and sheep that are available at Poros for 1500 gold. Go back into trade, slaughter the hogs, slaughter the sheep, and sell it. I am now up to 4,500 gold. This is my seed money. In order to get my first NPC to help with the blacksmithing process, just go to the tavern. Unfortunately, there was no one to recruit here, so I will head to Jalmari's, trying to avoid any and all conflict. My goal right now is to make enough money to start raising a massive army and equip myself, and then I will be conquering the world. Right now, I'm heading to Sinan to buy a ton of wood in order to make charcoal. Later in the game, though, we will just be smelting weapons, and you won't really have to go to any specific area. Early age of development, Sinan is one of the best places to go to level up blacksmithing. I'm gonna keep heading northwest just looking for my first NPC. Also, be sure to check for hogs on your way. Anything under 35 gold, you're pretty much guaranteed to make money so here is a I paid 1500 for the hogs and I sold them for 2954 so now I'm up to 5945 gold also check for cheap javelins and throwing knives on the way I'm gonna buy a few hogs in Antrek and not enough that it slows me down but enough that I can make a little bit more money 
Now that I'm here, I will slaughter and sell those. And here, they have really cheap hogs. I will buy all of those and slaughter those hogs too. So as you can see, I'm up to 6,759 gold. I'm going to purchase anything under 100 gold that has iron in it. These wood hammers and pitchforks don't have it. And then I'm also going to be looking for cheap javelins and throwing knives. These have great amounts of iron in them. From there, we head north to CNN. Once in CNN, you can see we can buy 85 hardwood for 7 gold each. That is very cheap. The hogs are expensive, so we will not purchase them. We will also buy all of these cheap daggers as they have a ton of iron in them. Anything that we can't smelt, we're gonna sell. This has been an unfortunately odd run where I'm not finding anyone in the taverns, so keep looking in the taverns and eventually you'll find someone that you can bring into your party. I'm going to go into the smithy and start refining enough charcoal to break these items down. I want to hit 25 so that I can get efficient charcoal maker. So I want to, I'm just going to smelt items, rest and smelt. I'm going to refine this into charcoal and rest. And you'll just keep doing this till you hit level 25. Go to your character, go to smithing and learn efficient charcoal maker. We do have an extra point in engineering down here, but I like the idea of being able to quickly create a battering ram and invade something before other armies get there. So I'm going to go with that. I'm also going to put a focus point into writing and we'll probably be buying a horse once we start making enough money. So now that we have efficient charcoal making, we're going to turn this all into charcoal to get a higher skill. And we will just continue to refine and rest over and over. Once we've refined all of our charcoal, we're going to start forging two-handed swords. And we're going to do this till we have about 40,000 gold. Show only unlock. Make things as big as possible. What you want is a high swing speed and a high cut damage. So always as you are unlocking new parts, make sure that you are optimizing those things to get the most money from when you sell these items. So those two-handed sell for 694 and 745. That's great. We will continue to buy all the hardwood that comes in, which is quite sufficient, and any and all daggers, relatively inexpensive. This will save us a lot on charcoal and having to make iron. But if you can find iron, buy it. There's actually iron right down south in Maranoth. So if you want to buy a couple of mules and head down there, that would be wise. Quick trick for all of you is there is a memorize feature. So if you click here, it will show you the, your crafting history. For some reason, it doesn't memorize the size of your blade. It memorizes the size of the other objects, just not the blades. So remember to reset that. Craft as many swords as you possibly can. So our goal right now is to get to 40,000 dinars so that we can start purchasing a ton of javelins so that we can unlock all of javelin schematics. Also remember to lock the items that you do not wish to sell so that you can quickly disperse of the crafted items. Essentially continue to buy small daggers, wood, iron, and craft two-handed swords, always making the best two-handed sword you can for both experience and money. Start accumulating mules so that you can move town to town with heavy loads because eventually you will outgrow the area you're in and want to go elsewhere to buy daggers. Once you finally hit 50 in smelting, you want to learn the most important part for this build, which is to increase the learning rate of new designs on smelting. This is important because we're going to buy a bunch of javelins and smelt them down. This stage of the game is a little tedious, but it should take you roughly about 30 minutes to an hour to get to the next phase where you will be smelting down javelins and then hopefully making a lot of money. And now that we learned parts from smithing, I'm going to be smelting all of my swords that I'm crafting on my main character so that I can get into the higher tier swords to make more money. And that will give us a lot of parts now. And we will just continue to do this until we can start making two-handed swords. You can also have your guys create and craft these, these two-handed swords if you plan on smelting them. Because it really doesn't matter how bad they are because you're not selling them. This will allow you to also maximize your learning. You have a double chance to learn and, and, and a a blueprint when you smelt so this allows you just to maximize that all right and there we go we got to tier two iron so now the real fun starts use high difficulty objects to get more experience but we're going to be selling all of these for money and so these are selling for 22 to 2500 each your designs are going to vary because certain parts are going to unlock but like i said look for high swing speed and high swing damage if you can find a blade that doesn't have any thrust pierce damage that's great um that's why the actually the best blade in the game to make money on is the long fox blade because it has no piercing but it makes less money than the javelin by a substantial amount and we're not going to be buying any more crude iron now that we've moved on to iron we can buy swords and smelt them down and sell them and it'll be more efficient 
We've kind of identified that I have the money now, and the biggest handicap I have is wood. I'm on a slow boat back up to Sianon. Buy all these meals, and now that I have more money and I'm higher level, I'm getting more and more of these items that I need for craft. So I just spent 62, so I just spent 6,050, and look at all that iron. I can buy 154 wood for nine. Now we're just gonna smelt everything that we have and make as much money, and then we're going to sell everything but 10 coal and go northeast to buy a ton of javelins. Crazy is once you can start crafting the max tier javelins, you get about a level per craft because it's like a 200 difficulty this pathway also leads you to the fastest way to level up blacksmithing a super op method for blacksmithing uh, Duane just leveled, which is great because I can give him one focus point in smithing and that's going to help me get someone up to steel maker. I need to get someone up to steel and maker one and two and three. There, I just made 20,000 off of that batch. You also get a tremendous amount of levels, character levels doing this. We're going to wait just a little bit and we're going to sell off the rest of our inventory. And then we're going to go to northeast and buy all the javelins that we possibly can. All right, and I just hit 75 in smithing. So I can double the chance of learning new crafting parts through smithing, which is really, really good. Or I can have it so I can refine two units of steel into one unit of fine steel. This is kind of important for this build. So this is the conundrum is do I take the easy way now or do I try to get one of my other guys up to 75? And I will say this, it is actually very easy to get up to 75 once you start crafting difficulty 200 javelins. So I am going to double the chance of Curious Smith because I still want to make two handed swords. I still want to make other items. And even with like a 100 smithing, you can craft highest tier items in the game. They're just a couple of stat points lower than what like the normal is but they're still better than anything you can buy so there's an, a massive advantage in being able to craft like really good two-handed swords especially for this combat build so that's where i'm going to lead that i have one free attribute point which i'm going to put in the social i'm also going to pump up my tr leadership trade charm steward and then medicine once i get another point i'm just going to start leveling these up tremendously so we're sitting at 80,000. We're going to keep all of the steel. We're going to sell the iron because it's bogging us down. We're going to sell the broad iron. We're going to sell the heart. We're going to keep all this charcoal because we need it. And we're going to recruit a full army. Now our run speed is 4.7 because of all the mules we have and all of the people. So we're able to cart all this coal. So now I'm going to go town to town, be buying two things, tribesmen, throwing daggers, and pugio blades, and all the javelins that I can find. Now the pugio blades and tribesmen throwing daggers yield fine steel. And that's how we're going to make these javelins which get our level up. Now we're going to need to get one of our other NPCs, the 75, to start converting things into fine steel. So I'm probably going to have them craft the fine javelins. If you don't want to go that route, instead of selecting the, the double smithing perk like I did, select that you can make fine steel. It's going to take me just a little bit longer to get to the point I want to get at, but in the long run, it's going to be a game changer because it takes a really long time to learn all of the blueprints. So everything you can do to make that, especially with just two focus points. So that skill is pretty much essential. So here you can see we can buy 22 javelins for 145. And we're going to go around until we have as many cheap javelins as we possibly can get. And so here are the tribesmen throwing daggers. These have fine steel in them. Buy these. Each one of these we can convert to 5,000 gold. The north is the best place to get large quantities of javelins. That's what makes this really funny is because you literally go from here to here. It's just perfect. All right, so we've spent about 40,000 on javelins and daggers. So now the real fun begins. The breaking down of javelins. So you can see these fish harpoons are probably the better ones because they have a little bit of iron, which we can craft into two-handed swords. But here you can see the tribesman daggers gives you fine steel and steel. And that's what we need to build the really expensive stuff. That when we break things down, we learn things, we're going to get through this fast. Now what's great is the javelin doesn't have many parts. We only want to use our main character for this because he has the perk, which allows him to learn this stuff faster. All right, now we've smelted down all of the javelins. We've uh, we've learned quite a bit, but not enough. So we're going to go for heavy... Nice, we got the mahogany shaft. This is the best shaft in the game for making money. What we need here is the riveted spearhead, which we haven't learned yet, and the tier 5 thin fine steel. This is going to be the best. Right now, we're just going to craft javelins, but look how cheap these are. So everybody's just going to craft javelins, and we're going to quickly learn everything in the game just doing this. So we basically smelted all those javelins down, and now we're recrafting and then we're just going to re-smelt them. And that's why I said it's a self-contained process. But we're close. I mean, it took me about an hour and a half to get to the point where I can make a million, a million gold. And the, the thing is, is this isn't just a one-time thing. This is like, from now on, you can make millions of gold. All right, and then I'm going to have him smelt. We can make tier four. We can make tier four. We're close. 
All we need now is the thin head. I'm just gonna have everybody in on this process. There we are, we did it. And these are gonna sell for about 11,000 a pop. So now we're just gonna go around buying those daggers and Pugio blades and crafting the best javelin in the game. All right, so now I will show you. Rebuild, but you see that didn't take me long. Mahogany shaft, 100%. Thin fine steel, 100%. Tier four riveted, 100%. And I have a whole YouTube video on this. I've tested every variance. This is the most gold per fine steel. So now, boom. And I'm getting an enormous amount of experience because of the difficulty. One of the higher forges, and I need to get someone to 75. Look at that. I got five skills just from crafting this. And even though those things they crafted were inferior quality, I only lost 300 gold. So look at that. 11,000 per. I just turned like those three grand worth of daggers into 55,000. So we've got everyone to the level so I can refine fine steel. Now, one of the great areas is uh, Sargot, Jocelyn, Galen, Karas. Problem. This area has one of the best items in the game for making these fine steel javelins. And that is the tribesman throwing daggers. And I can get about 16 of these per place I go to. So I'm just going to show you with these 16 daggers how much I can make. I'm going to go to the smithy. Doesn't matter who smells these down. I always usually use my lowest tier guy. We're going to smell all of these down. And we need this at a two to one ratio. So I got my one guy who can make fine steel. We'll move the odds a little bit, but I can easily refine some of this iron. That is good enough. And what's great is anyone can craft these javelins in your group you're gonna need everyone to craft them because they take a bit of stamina so i'll have my whole team all right so we've crafted all this so this is pretty easy to know how much money we just made here we made all these javelins 11,000 plus 67,000. so we made about 170,000 gold from 7,000 in daggers in less than two to three minutes it's a it's an investment of time it takes about two hours to get to this point but that is the gist of it and now if i want to every, pretty much every town i go to i can buy those daggers and make 170,000 gold worth of worth of speed 